Chapter 14, His Own Kind of People Has anyone ever come to ask for me? Thad asked Mrs. Barnett that first morning. Mr. Barnett will tell thee about that when he comes to dinner, she said. She looked at his buckskin suit. Did Little Rabbit make these for thee? She asked. No, ma'am, he replied. Not for me. She made it for her son, Eagle Wing, but he was killed in the battle with white folks. She gave them to me this morning. That was a kind thing for her to do, she said. I suppose thee would rather like to look like a white boy, though, would thee not? Yes, ma'am, I reckon I would, Thad answered. Actually, he was just a little proud of that beautiful buckskin suit. He had seen the brave strut in such ornamented suits, and he felt like doing a little strutting himself. In spite of Comanche meanness, he had come near to being an Indian himself. Mrs. Barnett brought him some clothes. She tried them until she found some that would be close to fitting the boy. These were sent from a Sunday school in the east, for us to distribute to the Indians, she explained. Now I'll go in the other room and give thee a chance to bathe. When he had scrubbed himself, Thad got into the underwear, shirt, and breeches she had brought him. Then Mrs. Barnett washed his long hair, clucking over the feathers Little Rabbit had given him along with the buckskin suit. Then she cut it off squares below his ears and across his forehead. He looked for all in the world like a Dutch boy, but he felt better and cleaner than he had in a long time. At the dinner table, Mrs. Barnett told her husband, Mr. Barnett, we must put some fat on this boy. His own folks will not recognize him like this. Again, Thad put the question about his people. Surely someone had inquired for him or Melissa. Mr. Barnett was a slow-talking man. Thad thought to himself that the man would never get around to saying what he was so much wanted to hear. Well, there have been several people in the last year inquiring about children. Whether any of them were of the family or not, I cannot say. He ate a few more mouthfuls while Thad fidgeted. Then he said, Last August, two men, no, it was a white man and a boy, about 15 years old, came. They asked about a girl 13 year old and a boy 14. What did they say the girl looked like? Thad asked, breathless. Black hair, blue eyes, and fair skin. The boy was white haired and freckled faced. There are a good many town headed, freckled faced boys, he commented, looking at Thad from under his brows. They told me that the girl was stolen a year ago last summer, along with the little sister. They found the little sister dead. The girl's name Melissa Branson? Thad asked. Melissa? Yes, I believe that was the name, Mr. Barnett fished into his pocket and brought a little book. Turning his pages slowly, he finally stopped at one. Yes, it was Melissa, he said. Melissa Branson. The man's name was Wiley Branson, and the boy's Buford. The father called him Bu. He peered at Thad again over his steel-rimmed spectacles. Has anyone ever heard of them? I'm the white-headed boy, Thad exclaimed. I know the Bransons. I tried to help Melissa get away from the Comanches, and they caught me. I guess she never got home, if they still were looking for her in August. Mr. Barnett studied his little book a few minutes. Here it is. Last fall, two men came. They were Texas Rangers. One said he was thy brother. I told them to come back in the late winter or early spring when Yellow Cloud's band would most likely be here. Thad kept wondering about Little Bit. Didn't they say anything about my little pony, Little Bit, he asked? Mr. Barnett shook his head. Thad told him how Little Bit had made her way home before several times. He had they wondered why she could not have taken Melissa safely home. I don't think it's strange, Mr. Barnett said. Melissa might have thought my pony was heading in the wrong direction and reined her in another. Thad thought that, that might be the reason, but then he had told Melissa positively to let Little Bit have her way. There were some of the people in Warhawk's village, Thad told him. There is an old lady, Miss Sally Buchanan, and two little grandsons. They are twins. Then there is the little boy Miss Sally had taken under her wing. She doesn't know his name except he is Willie. Has anyone asked about him? Mrs. Buchanan's son was here last summer, he said. They believed their mother must have been dead, for they had found no trace of her. There's the little boy listed as missing when his family was massacred in San Saba County less than a year ago. I believe there is an older Mary sister still living in San Antonio. I know, Warhawk, he said. I'll see what I can do. Then, if anyone comes here from your part of the country, they can take these home with them. But we had better wait a while unless they are being mistreated. Do thee believe that they are being treated badly? Thad smiled. I don't think anyone could mistreat those little boys with Miss Sally around, he replied. She was captured when she was a little girl and lived with the Comanche band until she was eight years old. She knows their language and she knows how to get along with them. Mrs. Barnett was a wonderful cook. Thad was not at all sure he was making any headway paying back the $70 because he stuffed himself with her good food three times a day. Mr. Barnett, she remarked one morning as she watched him cram food into his lean body. Did thee ever see a boy fill out faster than Thad here? His eyes twinkled. He was so bony when he first came to us that he feared his folks would not acknowledge him. Now I suppose that they will not know him for his fatness. A week later, an Indian boy who worked at the trading post stuck his head around the corner of the house and called to Thad. Mr. Barnett says to come. He wants to talk to you. Thad had hurried to the front of the building. Several Indians were lounging on the porch. There were eight or nine horses tied to the hitching post. Looking them over, as he had a habit of doing, Thad saw that two of them carried Texas saddles with the Ranger brand. As he stepped inside, he saw two men talking with Mr. Barnett. Thad's heart turned a somersault. He knew them both. Giles, he yelled, throwing himself at the first one. Giles grabbed him by the shoulder. Thad turned to the other man. 
Howdy, Mr. Johnny, he greeted. It was Mr. Johnny Answorth. He squinted his one good eye at Thad and said, Well, young and those Comanches haven't been treating you as bad as they did me. You're as fat as a porcupine. Tears stood in God's eyes, he said. Youngin, you've been long gone from home. Let's get back there. What do you say? Both men were bronzed and lean from long riding in the open. Thad could not speak. Giles held him for a moment, looking him over. Law, Thad, you must have grown a foot. You sure enough don't look like those Indians have been mistreating you. He glanced at Mr. Barnett, who stood smiling. Mr. Barnett tells me you were mighty poor and weak when you first got a hold of you. Thad nodded. I have been sick, he said. The Comanches didn't treat me badly, though. I always did what they told me, like Mr. Johnny said. Why didn't you all find me before? Pretty hard to find a needle in a haystack, young and Giles said. That's a big country out there. We had a fight with the Elkaz Indians because we thought you might be among them, Mr. Johnny said. Why didn't we find you then? We searched the camp. Thad gasped. Were you all there? Thad told them what he remembered of the battle and how he had been hidden under a pile of buffalo robes. He mentioned the old woman who had sat on top of him to fool the long knives. Well, I'll be, Giles exclaimed. I saw that poor old squawk lying there on a pile of buffalo robes and almost made her get up. But she seemed so helpless and old that I didn't have the heart to bother her. Dad told him about Melissa a little bit. Great day in the morning, youngin. You were over 300 miles from home. There's no telling what happened to poor little Lizzie. He had a worried look. Didn't little bit ever get home? Giles shook his head. Not yet, she hasn't, he said. I heard there's a white girl in the Tonkawa camp, Dad said. Name of the chief is Willowbird, but nobody knows where his camp is. Well, that's interesting, Giles exclaimed. If the girl is still alive, we'll find her. You recollect old Miss Sally Buchanan who lived up Windy Creek, Thad asked. Sure, I've known her all my life, Giles said. She was carried off and killed by the Comanches, her and Buck Buchanan's little twins boys. Yes, only they didn't get killed, Thad told him. No, Giles exclaimed. Everybody in the whole country thought they were carried off and killed. Come to think of it, their bodies never were found. I reckon, Mr. Johnny said. Everybody figures Miss Sally was too old and those little boys too young to live through what those Comanches might do to them. I talked to Miss Sally just before I came here, Thad told them. She didn't care much about herself, she said. She's getting old and hasn't got her husband anymore. So she doesn't care much if she dies there. That's what she said. But she's terribly worried about the little boys. Are they getting bad handling, Giles asked? No, but they're going on like Comanches. White Clover, Warhawk's wife, thinks they're her young ones just about. She pets them like they're really her own. Miss Sally does not like it at all, and she's anxious to get her folks to find them. I suppose she would never have lived through it all, Mr. Johnny said, if she hadn't grown up with them. You get to know how to handle them. She's in Warhawk's village, Thad told them. Mr. Barnes said Warhawks come in here quite often. Miss Sally has another little white boy too. Name's Willie, that's all. Mr. Barnett thinks he came from San Saba County. His family was massacred. Warhawk, huh, Mr. Johnny said. I grew up with Warhawk. It was his daddy's outfit that captured me. Name was Walking Bear. I have to talk with Mr. Warhawk, Mr. Barnett warned. I suppose thee know thee are only a little more safe with the Indians here in the territory than in West Texas. I reckon I ought to know these horse thieves pretty well, sir, Mr. Johnny said, pointing to his scarred face and patch-covered eye. Are thee not afraid to go among them alone? No, sir. I think I know how to handle them, he glared so fiercely that I could hardly believe it was Mr. Johnny. I'll tell Mr. Warhawk that Giles and I and our rangers will hound them till the yellow cows come home. He knows me and he knows the Texas rangers. He'll turn Miss Sally and all three of those little boys loose. Mr. Johnny seemed very sure of himself. Well, get on your horse and let's get going, Giles said. Thad and I are anxious to get back home, aren't we, Thad? I am for one, Thad said, but I do want to get Miss Sally and those little boys away from the Comanches first. We'll do it. You begin yourself ready to travel. Then Thad remembered something else. Oh, I forgot. I owe Mr. Barnett $70. $70? What is that for? Giles pretended not to understand. Is it for board? Oh, no. I've been working for board, Thad explained, but I belong to Mr. Barnett. He bought me for $70. Why, that old skunk, Giles exclaimed. Yellow Cloud starved you and beat you and worked you to half to death. Then he sold you for cash? He looked at that and grinned. Well, I reckon I'm willing to pay $70 to get you home. It'll be worth it to see Ma's face when you ride in. But you don't look to be worth more than 35 cents on the hoof right now. You young maverick, he fished the money out of his wallet and handed it to Mr. Barnett. There now, he said to Thad. You're the Conway's boy again. That suit you? Thad's heart was too full for words. Just one thing still worried him now. Would they ever find Melissa in a little bit? I'm to blame if Lizzie is dead, he said. I was the cause of leaving the Indian camp. She might have lived like I did if she had stayed with them. Now, now, son, Mrs. Barnett comforted. She would probably never have lived through what thee did. Thou art a big, strong boy. Now I think thee will locate her in the village of the Tonkawas. Mr. Johnny agreed. There isn't a doubt that she is being taken care of by the Tonkawas. They're friendly to white folks because we protect them from the Comanches. 
Now all we got to do is find the village of Old Willowbird. The men rode off and Mrs. Barnett helped Thad get his belongings to get started home. 600 miles is a long way to ride on a horse, she said. I want thee to save one clean outfit to put on before reaching home, so thy mother will not think I have neglected thee. Giles and Mr. Johnny came in before 9 o'clock that night. Miss Sally and the twins were with them, as was little Willie. They had bought several horses from Warhawk for Thad and Miss Sally and the children to ride. Mr. Johnny said, I think I know the family of this little fellow. There were a colony of German settlers, only an older married daughter is still living. How did they manage to talk White Clover into giving up the twins, Thad wanted to know. I don't know much of the Comanche talk, Giles said. Johnny did the negotiating. He and Warhawk seemed like two old friends getting together. Mr. Johnny laughed and said, I knew I could handle Warhawk. I knew he wouldn't give me any trouble. It cost me 50 bucks for each of them, but I figure I'll get it back. I felt a little sorry for White Clover, though. She was sure attached to those twins and pretty fond of Willie, too. But she has a young one of her own now, and she'll get over it. Miss Sally took a bath, and the first thing cleaned up the three little boys. She put on some clothes that Mrs. Barnett gave her from the donation barrel. Lando Goshen, Miss Sally exclaimed. I never expected to be going home again. But I did pray the Lord wouldn't leave these little ones who grow up Comanches. The next morning before the spring sun went up, they were packed and ready to start. Some of Mrs. Barnett's good food was in their saddlebags. We must have prayer, Mr. Barnett said. It was a comfort to Thad to hear the good man asking God to help them on their journey and to see them safely home. Then he prayed that Melissa might be found. Mrs. Barnett kissed Thad and Miss Sally and the little boys goodbye. Mr. Barnett patted Thad on the back. He is a good boy, he said to Giles, and I'm sure that only his trust in God brought him through. Afterward, Thad was never quite sure he remembered to thank God for taking care of him. Sometimes a boy is good at asking, but not so good at saying thank you. Continue listening.